The Nikkor HC68 High Performance Dual Beam E-Focus Headlamp with a brightness of 2000 lumens. Accessories included are the USB Type-C charging cable, the battery, of course, and then there is a center head strap. So if you like having the head strap on the center, or if you're wearing a helmet, for example, you could hook this on. I've gone ahead and taken that off. So it is just your normal uh, headband type strap. I find that I don't really need it on this headlamp. Now some headlamps, uh, especially with the aluminum case, as opposed to a plastic type case, are a little bit heavier. However, this one I feel is not heavy enough that I need the additional strap in the middle and I feel it's more comfortable uh, without that strap. So Nikkor build quality, of course, is top notch. Very, very rugged and tough design. You've got two separate LEDs uh, in there. You can uh, switch this from spot and flood just like you could the UT27. However, this one has a little bit more of a unique uh, feature set to it. We'll go over that in a moment. On the end here, you have your power button. And on the other side, you have your uh, battery screw. Both of these will screw open. So we can unscrew the one side of the light and get access to the battery. You do get a 3500 uh, milliamp battery with that. So that's nice. Going to give you some decent run times there. Then to charge the light, you simply unscrew the other side of the headlamp until you have exposed the type C charging port. So you unscrew this all the way. It will not come all the way off. It will stop once you've uh, reached a certain point and you can see you have the type C uh, charging there. The HC68 features two LEDs. So you have a spotlight and a floodlight. It also has a red light that has a high, low and flash and also a beacon and SOS. So it really has it all when it comes to a headlamp minus strobe, which you really don't need, in my opinion, on a headlamp. The headband, as I mentioned, is super comfortable. There's this little rubberized strip that goes here that helps it uh, stay uh, positioned on your head. So in addition to the power button on the side, you have two buttons on the top, a plus and a minus. And if you press one of those buttons, you will get a flash. Three flashes means you're greater than 50% charge. Two flashes is under 50%. And then one flash would be under 10%. So a pretty quick way to uh, see how charged your battery is. Operation is pretty straightforward. Once you get used to it, you simply just depress the button on the side and that will turn the light on. It does have a memory, so it is gonna go back to the last brightness and mode that you had the light on. Again, I can single click and turn the light off. So it is a very nice on and off. You don't have to hold anything down. You don't have to double click anything. So I do appreciate when it is just simple and straightforward like that to get your light on and off. Once the light is on, there are two different ways you can control the brightness. So we are on the uh, floodlight right now. It's at its lowest. So if we press down, it won't go any lower and we can step it up to its highest by just pressing the plus button. So we can continue to press that and we can go all the way on up into its brightest on the floodlight mode. Now you can see that this is quite bright. I believe on the flood side of it, it goes up to 1400 lumens at its highest and we can go right back down. Now, if we wanted to switch over to the spotlight, you simply just hold the corresponding button down so we can hold this down it'll switch over to the spot again if we wanted to switch back we could just hold it down so a long press switches you over and then you can step that up again so we can go ahead and step up the spotlight side up into our desired brightness now this will go up to 1800 not quite its full brightness but it'll go up to 1800 uh, lumens on the spotlight side now again if I were to just single press and turn it off and single press and turn it back on, it's gonna memorize where you were. And so once you get comfortable or once you get the brightness uh, you know, dialed in for your particular task, it is nice that you can come right back to that brightness. Another feature of this headlamp is that it has infinite adjustment between spot and flood. So let's say you want a little bit more um, floodiness to your spot. You wanna light up the area in front of you a little more. Uh, you can do that by simply just 
holding down the uh, corresponding button. Again, I wanna, I wanna mix it over to this side a little bit, so I'll hold down this button, and you can see that it'll mix, and it'll actually go all the way up uh, over to that floodlight side. I can hold this down again, and it'll go all the way over to the spotlight side. Now keep in mind, whichever brightness level you have it on, your low, medium, high, for example, it's just gonna stay within that brightness level, but it will dim it uh, over to uh, spot or flood. So we could, you know, select this medium brightness here and we could give it, you know, sort of an even 50-50 on our spot and flood. So you can really control, uh, you know, your brightness level and you can control the amount of focus you have, whether you want more distance lighting with the spot or you want more, um, you know, close lighting with the flood. Again, turn it off, turn it back on, it's gonna come right back to that setting that you have it on. So if we step up one of the sides here, if I step up the brightness, again, we can uh, mix it over to the one side, press the other button, and we can mix it all the way over to the other side. Now the only mode that this doesn't work in is the lowest mode. So on our low mode, I can't mix it to one side or the other, I can just switch it from one side or the other. You do have to be one click up in your brightness here, so we do have to be one click up if we're on that side, or one click up if we're on that side, and then we can go ahead and mix it together. On each side, you have five different brightness levels, so we're on our spotlight side, so one, two, three, four, five, and then of course we could mix them, or we can step back down to the lowest, switch over to our floodlight side, one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, we could mix them. So between the five brightness levels on the floodlight side, the five brightness levels on the spotlight side, you can really dial in not only your brightness level, but you can also dial in the amount of focus you have with that floodlight and spotlight. So it's really just infinite, the amount of light you can shed um, you know, on a subject or on a task that you're doing between the two different light levels. And then again, you can mix them depending on you know how much fill you wanna put in there. So I find that that's really cool. I haven't seen that on a headlamp yet. Um, it's really cool that you have independent br brightness steps between the two and also that you can mix the two. Okay, so what we have left would be our turbo and then our special modes. Turbo, instead of just single pressing the button on the side to turn it on and off, you simply hold it down. Now it is quite bright. You'll see this in the night shots. Quite bright, it's definitely just taking all the uh, fill out of my camera there. Uh, so again, long press and you'll get to that 2000 lumen mode, which is the max on both sides here. Special modes, we just uh, double click and then you'll get to your special modes. So there's our red light and then again, we can step up high and low. So that's our red low, red high. Then we have a red flash, can keep going. That is our beacon, keep going. And then you have an SOS and you can of course go back through those uh, all the way back down to red low. There is also one more mode that this light has and it's your direct access. So of course we can double click to get direct access to our turbo. If you just wanted direct access to your low, you hold down the low button first and then you press your side switch. So that's gonna give us uh, direct access to our low. So if I step it up here and then turn the light off and I turn it back on, it's gonna go back to that memory. But if I hold the minus button down and turn it on it's just going to go straight direct to that low which is kind of nice so if you know oftentimes i want to go directly to that low maybe i'm indoors for example and i don't want to you know risk you know shooting a ton of light out so i want to know that i'm going directly to that low you have instant access to it there and then you also have instant access to your high that to me is not probably something that I would do often because if I want direct access to a lot of light, I'm just gonna hold it down and it's gonna go right to that turbo. But the feature is there if you hold down the plus sign instead of the minus sign and then turn it on, it's gonna go to the highest on whichever side you have it on. So you can see there we have it on our floodlight side. If I go ahead and switch it over here to our spotlight side, turn it off, and then I hold the plus button, it's going to go to our highest on that side. One thing to mention with the turbo is when you do activate it, it will deactivate within 60 seconds or if it heats up and you cannot control the brightness from there. You do have to turn it off and go back into your regular settings to be able to control the brightness. So, you know, maybe that is one reason you would go to your highest uh, first because then you could control the brightness. 
But again, for me, when I need that much light, it's not often for a long period of time. So I would just turbo it and then, you know, see what I need to see in the distance and then maybe, uh, you know, turn the light back on and adjust the light accordingly. Now there is no electronic lockout on this light, but you can simply just unscrew the battery cap, a couple twists, and then you are locked out. All right, let's start off with the turbo setting. You can see that it is quite bright, 2000 lumens, plenty, and a headlamp. Got a good mix of the spot and flood because both of the LEDs are on, which is awesome. So we can switch from both lights on at their max to the spotlight. You can see you lose a little bit of the flood there. That is the brightest setting for the spotlight. Definitely quite bright. And then the coolest thing with the infinite brightness, I can just switch it over to the flood. So you can see you lose the uh, spot there and you have just flood, plenty of light. And then we can switch back to the spot. So that's all spot again. Or we can go about halfway, just like that. And you have a good mix of spot and flood. If we want a little bit more flood, could take away some of the spot. That to me is just an awesome feature on a headlamp. We can step it down a couple clicks down to medium. And then we could go all flood. all spot or a mixture of the two super duper cool when you're close up it doesn't make much difference whether you go to the flood or the spot this is all flood and that's all spot obviously flood would be better for this situation but it doesn't make much difference until you're up into the higher brightness levels, whether you go flood or all spot. There you got that hot spot in the center. Here's our red light low, red light high, plenty of red light on the high for out in front of you or if you're just reading or something, plenty of light in front of you to be able to read a book or a map. Again, we can go all spot. Come back to just flood. Or a good mixture of both. Do a wall shot here so you can see the difference between the spill on the flood and then the tightness of the spot.